this Wednesday, right after the 5.30 Mass, we're having a meeting for all the catechists. So we're going to start catechism again. Also, tomorrow we start again the last, the last week of the uh, traditional Catholic uh, Vacation Bible School. It starts at 8 o'clock here and goes until 3 o'clock and come back here. Uh, and that Friday morning we have the Mass at 8 o'clock in the big church. Amen. It's really beautiful to hear St. Peter tell us how we need to love each other, be humble, modest, good. Stop doing bad. Do good. Yesterday I was giving a talk to families that are going to have their children baptized and be godparents. And again, almost every woman that came had tight pants on. And they have constructed a little world around their Catholicism. They want baptism, they like it, but they also like the world, they like sex, being sexy out in the world so men will look at them. They put it all together. It's like, I can do this and I can do that and we'll just, I'll make my own little world of what I believe in. I'll do my baptisms, my first communions, my confirmation, I'll have my quinceanera, I'll have my things that I want, but I'll also do this because I want to do this and I want to do that. I don't want to go to Mass. I don't have to go to Mass. I can have this and that, and I will not go to Mass. I will not do what Jesus asks. Jesus is very clear. He says, do not do bad. Do good. It's clear. But everybody builds a nice little world around them to justify doing bad. They just can call it, oh, I don't consider it bad. That's just, that's old-fashioned. Jesus' words are old-fashioned. The simple thing of do good, don't do bad, no, I don't believe in that anymore. That's too hard. That's old-fashioned. Throw that out. So, today we hear St. Peter telling us to be kind, to be loving, to forgive, to, and he says, if you do live a holy life, you will be blessed. If you don't, you won't. He says it very clearly. And we wonder why we have so many problems in our lives. Simply because we are not doing what God wants. We bring not only to every action that we do, brings bad eventually to us, but it also brings curses on us. So, like say that I drink and drive, and I get pulled over and get a DUI. Okay, now my insurance goes up. Now um, I have to go to court. Now I have to go to classes. Now I have to pay this huge fine. Those are just the natural things from doing sin. Problems. Lot of problems. But besides that, there are God stops listening to our prayers. If you read the psalm, and I have to read the psalms, and I do the 150 psalms in one week, that's the traditional bravery. Constantly. Do good, bless. Do bad, cursed. The evil, get away from everything, but eventually they fall, you can't even find them anymore. The good suffer persecuted problems, but they last forever. They're the ones that stand. They're the ones that God stays with. The Psalms repeat it over and over and over again. But St. Peter says here that he says, um, he says, the eyes of the Lord upon the just, that means the people who are doing good, is ears to their prayers. Why are we here at Mass this morning? We are offering the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Heavenly Father, for blessings. First, to take away our sins, and also to take care of our problems, to help us in every way that we need help. Hopefully you're here to adore God, but also, help me, God, I need help. 
Our families need help. We need more love. We need more peace in our family. We need more unity. The Holy Gospel, Jesus says that, um, you know, if you even get angry and call someone a mean name, you deserve to go to hell. Man, again, Jesus, you're too hard. I don't agree with you. Who can stop cussing, swearing? I'm just in a bad habit. I can't stop. It just comes out. I gotta cuss and swear. That's just the way I am. No, nope, says yeah. You can say something mean to someone, you're going to hell. What? That's not fair, Jesus. Do you know what? He gives us extra graces. That's why we hear at church to get the graces, the strength to not. He says first said if you can if someone killed someone, you could get back and kill them. You go, no more. It says, don't kill, though. The um, uh, fifth commandment, do not kill. But it did say eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, pretty much. And then also, you need to realize, right after the Ten Commandments, do not kill, God says if someone is doing like adultery, kill them. If someone's doing something else wrong, kill them. Stone them to death. You know? What? When after the, Moses was up on the uh, Mount uh, Sinai and he came down and they were worshipping the, the golden false calf, the false god of Egypt, and they were also having orgies and stuff, Moses said, kill, and like something like, I don't know, 12,000 or more people were killed by the sword, you know. So, don't kill, don't kill the good people. Someone just asked in our vacation, traditional Catholic vacation Bible school, asked me that there's going to be some kind of execution going on. What do we say? I say, if people are really bad, and you've tried putting them in jail over and over and over, and they keep on getting out, doing bad, the church allows execution. We should never want anyone executed. We should never want anyone killed. Ever. If you think, oh, that's so good, they're getting executed, and there's something wrong with you. No, we want conversions, not killing. We want these people to convert. But if they continue to do horrible things, and if it's a deterrent thing, then you can execute criminals. The church has allowed that. But we should never want it. And if we all, there weren't people justifying and these people like the guy who killed Father Walker and beat so badly Father Tara, he had a nice little structure on, well it's all right to kill or to beat up priests because I not just got out of jail and I don't have enough money and I need the money and the priests have lots of money and so it's all right if I have to beat him up or kill him, whatever, because no one will give me a job. He built a nice little structure around him so he justified killing. Same thing in the cartelis. And I talked to people, and they've gone, we had to kill him. These two brothers killed a drug dealer. We had to kill him. He kept stealing drugs. What? Got to kill someone? Does they keep stealing drugs? Well, they justified it. They built up a, a, a framework that allowed them to do what they wanted to do. So we have to be very careful what our structure is. And we do need to forgive people. The eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth concept, that's the Muslim idea, that's the Jewish idea. Get back. Vengeance. You do something mean to me, I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to pay you back. How many Catholics do that? Many. You offend them, man, they're mad at you. Right off. I'm mad at Father for what he says. I don't like that. You know, I don't like this person. And they're all angry at everybody. Is that the right answer? You can disagree. I don't agree with what Father says. I don't agree. I don't agree with what Jesus says in the Bible. I don't agree. But let's work it out. Don't get angry at Jesus because he says hard things. Don't get angry at a priest because he says hard things. Don't get angry at your parents if they say hard things. No, say, I don't maybe agree. i got to figure this out. It doesn't sit good with me how Jesus can say that. 
That doesn't seem fair to me that Jesus is putting someone in jail just for saying a mean thing, I and mean, putting them in hell just for saying a mean thing. Doesn't seem fair to me. That's all right. So but let me humbly go look. Let's see, why is Jesus saying it? What's going on here? And not hate Jesus for saying it. Jesus is God. He knows what he's saying. It's right. And we have to fit into conform to him, not have Jesus conform to us. That means, like, I want Jesus, you to think and justify things the way I fit in my little world. No. We have to fit into God's real, true world. That's where truth is. That's where life is. That's where strength is. That's where blessings come from. Anyway, the Muslims, the Jews keep killing, revenge all the time. They're not doing what Jesus says. Love your enemies. Forgive your enemies. And then if you do have something, he said that, you know, how many things have we done against people and never gone and apologized? But usually we forget about them. So it's so long that we forgot about it, so now I don't have to worry about it. How many times people have borrowed money for people and then they forget about them, never pay them back? They go on as if nothing's wrong. How many times have we hurt people with what we said and never had the guts being manly enough or woman enough to go and say, I am sorry. So the best thing to do is right away. If you're mean to someone or say something mean or are disrespectful to your parents or to other people, then right away, let your humility down. I mean, put on your humility, let your pride, put your pride aside and go, that was wrong, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. Not if you just thought you not, don't mean to, you haven't said anything wrong, you just said, like I hurt lots of women's feelings by saying, those plants are really immodest. I hurt their feelings. Well, they're going to go, Father, come back to me and say, I'm sorry for hurting your feelings. I'm not meaning to hurt your feelings, I'm just trying to say, that offends God, and it's wrong. Okay? And so, but I'm talking about other things we go, you know, people, it's easy to say mean things to people. It's easy to not be nice. That's how we get our way. Spoiled kids get their way by when you say, eat that breakfast. Eat it. Ah, you're the worst mom and dad in the whole world. I hate you. You make me eat this horrible cereal. It tastes terrible. I can't stand it. The parents are so bad because they make you drink and eat cereal. No. They're good. You're bad because you're not eating healthy stuff for your own body. You're not doing what your parents know is best for you. If you just start in that humble, humble way of saying, I don't know everything. And my life is messed up. Be honest. If your life is messed up, something's wrong with the way you're living it. But people who live, have chaotic, messed up lives and they keep blaming it on everybody else. It's that person's fault. It's the government's fault. It's the church's fault. It's my parents' fault. The parents have died long on them. My parents' fault I messed up. It's this fault. It's that's fault. It's my boss's fault. It's my worker's fault. It's the priest's fault. It's everybody else's fault. No, if we have messed up lives, we better first look at our own faults. And then you can say, well, it's hard, it's difficult. Like say that uh, Gary Moran said, it's hard to find a job when I just get out of jail. No one wants to hire me anymore because I have such a bad criminal record. Nothing wrong saying that. He's right. It is hard to get a job when you have a criminal record. But that doesn't mean you're going to go out and justify killing and stealing. No. There's got to be another way. Even if you have to live poor, even if you have to beg on the street for food, not for money, for food, or a place to stay, something like that. You can do that. No one will give you a job. But you can always offer. I'm willing. 
give me a place to stay. I'll always keep the house perfectly clean. I'll keep your whole uh, garden perfectly clean. I'll do anything I can so I have a place to stay. But that would be the right way of doing it. I messed up. I did my past. I've been, in, I've been a criminal. I deserve to not get a job because I messed up. Man, society, it, I won't say the word, it's no, I'll mess up. No. I messed up, and who makes society messed up? We do. We're all make society. Blame it on everybody else. No. God is here to help us. God will help us. We're here at Mass to get help. To get help to be holy, to do what's right, to be loving to be kind, to forgive. Those are the things we're asking for. Blessings and good character. A good character that's honest, that's good and holy. Amen.